So Anastasia and Tony have just asked me to share a few words. I'm just going to share a few Bible verses, just um, have a bit of a short sermon, and I won't be speaking for too long. Uh, so if you can just bear with me for a moment. Well, if you don't know me, uh, my name is Victor Tay. I pastor the church that uh, the Mitchells have been attending for about the last three years now. So that's how, that's how long I've known them. Now, when I first met Anastasia uh, three years ago, I remember she was really wanting to have a child at that point, and they were trying for some time. And I remember we, uh, we prayed as a church for, for quite a while. And now here we are, we are celebrating TJ's first birthday. So thank God for that. Hopefully the first of uh, many more first birthdays. <laughs> so our church, if you don't know, it's a, it's a Bible-believing church. Not as many as you, mate. <laughs> So our church, our church is a Bible-believing church. Um, I know many of you may, have, may come from Catholic or Orthodox backgrounds. So some of the things I'm going to share with you today, hopefully you take it in the right spirit. I'm not here to try and upset anybody, but just uh, give a bit of the reasons about uh, why we are celebrating how we are today. So as Christians, you know, we shouldn't get our beliefs and practices from a denomination or you know, just traditions that have just been passed down. Um, but we should base everything that we do and teach on the Bible. Now, not all traditions are bad. You know, Christianity is, after all, it's passing on of traditions. You know, as the Lord Jesus Christ has established, and then He's passed them down through His apostles. So the question really is, what is the difference between a good tradition and a bad tradition? Well, if we just uh, take a look at Matthew 15, this is where Jesus actually addresses the topic of traditions. So in Matthew 15... It says, Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? So we see here that there were elders, they had traditions, long-held traditions, passed down, but the problem with their traditions is it went against the commandments of God. So a good tradition is one that aligns with God's commandments and a bad tradition is one that goes against God's commandments. So today we're celebrating TJ's first birthday and the Mitchell family, they decided to remember this milestone with a dedication. Uh, so we're going to be praying for them after this as opposed to a baby baptism. Because baptizing babies is one of those religious traditions, unfortunately, that is, um, th that is passed down through the years that actually goes against God's commandments. So I don't know how familiar you guys are with the stories in, uh, in the Bible, but in the book of Acts, in chapter 8, uh, we have uh, the story of Philip, uh, one of the early deacons. He actually comes across an Ethiopian eunuch who's reading the Bible he preaches the word of God to him and that uh, Ethiopian eunuch believes on Jesus Christ and gets saved. So here's the story in Acts 8 verse 36. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? So he's asking, hey, here's water. What's stopping me from getting baptized? Or if you believe in baptizing babies, nothing's stopping you from getting baptized because you can baptize anybody according to that belief. But in verse 37, verse 37, Philip says, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. So you see, why did the Ethiopian eunuch need to believe before he could be baptized? Because you should be saved before being baptized, right? You need to believe, and believing is the only thing required to be saved. Now, if you don't know what I mean by saved, what I mean by saved is when you die, uh, you, you go to heaven rather than going to hell. There's two places you can go, and we all want to make sure that we're going to heaven, uh, not going to the lake of fire. Now, a lot of people, you know, a lot of you here, you're probably from a Christian background, you're probably from an Orthodox background, uh, you probably know already about Jesus. You know, I, I wouldn't be telling you anything new there. You know who Jesus is, you know what he did for you. Um, but even though a lot of people I speak to, especially from an Orthodox background, Catholic background, Protestant backgrounds, they know about Jesus Christ, 
but they're not 100% sure if they went to if if they were to die that they would go to heaven. And you know some people they don't even think it's possible to know that you can know for sure that you're going to heaven. Now in 1 John 5:13 the Bible says here these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. So the Bible's really clear that we can know that we have eternal life. And a lot of people don't even know that this verse is in the Bible, that we can know that we have eternal life. So if you're here today and you're unsure, you know, you think, hey, when I die, am I going to heaven? And you think, well, I'm not sure whether I'm going to heaven chances are you probably think you have to be good enough to get to heaven. A lot of people think that. They think in order to get to heaven, it's about how good we are, uh, not whether or not we have believed on Jesus Christ. So if I can just sum up how to be saved just in five points, I like to describe it in just five really easy points. So the first, it's hard for me to hold these things, but the, the first point is that we've all sinned. You know, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I don't think anyone would disagree with that. Uh, the second point is that there's a punishment for our sin. The punishment is, you know, eternal hell. So that's, that's God's punishment for our sin. The wages of sin is death. Number three is that Jesus Christ died for our sins. He took the punishment for you. So the Bible says Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now these three points you probably already know. You already know that Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. He lived a sinless life. Uh, he was born of the Virgin Mary and he did that to die for our sins. Now point number four is where people get a bit confused. They wonder, hey, what do I have to actually do to be saved? And that question was actually asked in the Bible in Acts 16. It was asked to the Apostle Paul and Silas. They asked, a jailer asked, hey, what must I do to be saved? And the answer was, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Now a lot of people that come from a religious background they already think, well, I already believe in Jesus Christ. Does that mean I'm going to heaven? Well, if you think about the question, are you going to heaven? If your first thought was, I hope I'm good enough to get to heaven, then that shows that you're actually trusting yourself. You're not actually believing on Jesus Christ. So when the Bible says believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, what it means is we have to stop trusting our own good works, stop trying to get ourselves to heaven, and just fully put our faith on what Jesus has done, that he, well, he died, was buried, and rose again for our sins. So that's number four and, and number five is once we believe we have everlasting life. You know the most famous verse in the Bible is John 3.16. A lot of you might have heard, may already be familiar with it. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son and whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. So once we believe on Jesus Christ we have everlasting life because Jesus paid for all our sins past, present and future. So once you've believed on Jesus Christ, you're saved, you have everlasting life, and then you get baptized as an outward testimony of that faith. This is, this is why the Ethiopian eunuch, when he asked, what's stopping me from getting baptized? Well, he had to believe first, he had to believe on Jesus Christ, and then getting baptized was that outward testimony. So why do people baptize babies if the Bible is so clear that, you know, what's stopping us from getting baptized is believing? Well, it's because they've been taught their whole life that baptism washes away sin, right? So if baptism, if they believe baptism washes away sin, then it makes sense to baptize somebody as early as possible, right? To wash away their sin. But water doesn't wash away our sin. The only thing that washes away our sin is the blood of Jesus Christ. The last verse I just want to share with you today is 1 Peter 3.21. The Bible says, The like figure, whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. And then it says, Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So you see here that it's not the water baptism that saves us. Water baptism is an answer of a good conscience. Because we believe we get baptized and we're actually saved by what baptism represents. Baptism represents the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's why when you get baptized you go under the water, when you come out of the water that's Jesus Christ rising again from the dead. So you don't get baptized to have your sins washed away, you get baptized because your sins have been washed away. 
So anyways, I hope you learned something there and it's, it's important that we understand that because this is really the basis for why today uh, Tony and Anastasia, you know, rather than having a baby baptism to celebrate TJ's first birthday, um, so we're not having a baptism today, but rather we're going to just take some time to pray that God will help Tony and Anastasia use their lives to serve Jesus Christ because it's got to start with you too so that they will be that godly example for TJ to also serve Jesus Christ with his life. So with that, I'll just, uh, I know you guys are standing up here already. I'll just get you guys to stand with me. So I'm just going to say a prayer for Tony and Anastasia and then we're going to pray for little TJ here that he'll grow up, you know, he'll, he'll get saved as early as he can. He'll get, then get baptized and then he'll serve Jesus Christ with his life. Let's pray. All right, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you that we can gather here, we can share some food, we can celebrate. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for Tony and Anastasia, that they've come together, that, that you've blessed them with a beautiful baby boy. And help them, Lord, in their life. It's not easy to be a parent. It's not easy to live a godly Christian life. So I pray, Lord, that you would give them the grace to do that. Help them to be that example uh, for TJ here. And we pray, Lord, that as TJ grows, and he grows in knowledge that, Lord, he will follow after that example, that he will know Jesus Christ as his Savior. Lord, that he would make that decision to serve Jesus Christ with his life. And, Lord, we just want to make that known today in the presence of the people here and in the presence of you, that, uh, that you would help us, Lord. We need your grace every day. So thank you for the Lord Jesus. Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins, giving us eternal life. And we pray all these things in his name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Yeah, I would like to I'll just take that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, Mike. Thank you very much. Now I'll be taking the microphone. <laughs>